afternoon, everyone. So this, uh, this is great. Congratulations, Terry. It's so nice to see uh, leadership get celebrated that way. Um, and uh, it's, uh, you know, and I, I have to tell everyone in the room, by showing up today, um, you're all showing tremendous leadership. So thank you very much for being here. Um, this, this next award's a real privilege uh, for me to present. Uh, and I don't know if Yellow could tell or not, I jumped on this one um, when, the, when the opportunity presented itself. And uh, this, uh, this leader, um, not only has she done amazing things, but I get to personally thank her uh, for the joy she has provided to my family and the tremendous efforts that she's done to uh, create a vibrant community uh, in the western mountains of Maine. Um, each year, uh, Maine Development Foundation honors a leadership Maine alumnus who has demonstrated exceptional leadership in accomplishing great things for the state of Maine. And the award honors uh, former Governor Kenneth M. Curtis, who was the dean of the first class of leadership Maine. Uh, past recipients include illustrious members such as Meredith Jones, Angus King, Steve Rowe, Shannon Haynes, and Tim Hussey. Robin Zinchuk has been executive director of the Bethel Area Chamber of Commerce since 1986, leading the chamber in its evolution from a tiny nonprofit organization to one with more than 235 business members, three full-time staff, and a budget of more than $350,000. Robin credits her success to the variety of supportive and visionary individuals with whom she has worked with over the years. Uh, and from her list of accomplishments and activities, um, and this is so typical of great leaders to call out the, the folks around her, um, but she's one of those great leaders herself. Empowering leaders is a hallmark of the Maine Development Foundation. We now have over 1,000 graduates of the Leadership Maine program, and I'm sure there's many of you here today. In fact, it'd be great if we could just have a, a quick show of hands to, for Leadership Maine alums out there, that's, yeah, take a look around. That's, that's an excellent show. Um, if you've been through the program, you know what an incredible experience it is, providing memories and connections that will last a lifetime, tremendous network. Uh, Robin is a member of the Ada class of Leadership Maine and says that Leadership Maine was by far the most relevant and meaningful professional development experience she has had in her 30-year career. That's a tremendous endorsement. If you haven't been through Leadership Maine yet, I would strongly encourage you to experience for yourself. Robin is a leader in her community, her region, and the state. The program lists all of the organizations, so if you take a, take a look at that program, I'm not allowed to name all those programs because it would just extend things deep into the afternoon here. Um, but you'll, you'll note uh, that just even based on her being involved with a specific region, uh, the numbers of issues and groups which she's influenced is statewide. Uh, if you work in economic community development in Maine, you know that it's difficult to find a project or effort in her area that she's not been involved with in some way. Nancy Smith, Executive Director of Grossmart Maine, says Robin brings to any regional or statewide issue a valued perspective based on her years of experience and her love of Maine, particularly her beloved Bethel area. And Rob Riley of the Northern Forest Center says that Robin has been an incredible voice for the tourism sector in Maine and has lent her expertise to broader conversations on economic and community development that is compatible with and builds on the region's natural assets. Rob recounts how in 2008, as part of a 60-member sustainable forestry initiative, Robin articulated the region's opportunity to provide a unique visitor experience that was mutually compatible with the working forest work that was unanimously endorsed by the region's four governors and congressional delegation and became a key organizing document to guide investment by the Northern Border Regional Commission. It's exactly the kind of vision that we were talking about today. Robin is originally from East Brunswick, New Jersey. In her free time, she hikes, runs, kayaks, bikes, and Nordic skis. She definitely picked the right place for all that. She's traveled widely in the US and Canada, spent 10 months in Europe, traveling with her family in high school. With all of that, we're certainly glad that she made her way here and decided to call Maine home. Robin is a tremendous leader in her region and a tremendous asset to the state of Maine. And MDF is pleased to present her with the Kenneth M. Curtis Leadership Award, sponsored by the Betterment Fund. Robin.
Whew. Wow. So first, I'd like to thank MDF, Yellow, and the board for this honor. I don't know exactly, when I think, you know, I live in my body, <laughs> what, what have I done um, except for really love what I do every day to deserve such an honor. I'd also like to thank the good folks and my friends at the Betterment Fund for sponsoring this award and for all of the incredible things that you do, all the support of the programs that are near and dear to my heart and to so many of us here in the room. Additionally, I'd like to thank my sister, Wendy Neumeyer, who was responsible for getting me here to Maine in the first place. She and her husband, Jack, um, went back to the land. We decided to leave New Jersey, and they came up first, and homesteading on over 100 acres in West Paris. And I just had to come up and see how my sister was living in that trailer on 100 acres and see what life like in Western Maine was going to be about. And um, I'm just so happy that I uh, fell in love with it. She introduced me to my husband, and um, the rest is kind of history. I didn't know anything about Ken Curtis, really, um, before Yellow called me. So I went online to learn about this man who uh, I'm, I'm being honored on behalf of him. Um, and he was a trailblazer, for sure, and uh, what the first Democrat in a long line of Republican governors. And he was not afraid to lean into his discomfort, or to anybody else's discomfort, for that matter, and uh, accomplished great things, uh, both in politics and also in his personal life. And um, I'm president of the Bethel Rotary Club this year, and we um, just gave a, a a basically a small scholarship to the Susan Curtis, Camp Susan Curtis, uh, which was obviously um, founded by Ken Curtis in honor of his daughter. And they do an incredible, incredible things for Maine's children. So in thinking about, so what makes me kind of qualified to be standing up here and to be honored, and I think about that we're all a manifestation of our stories leading up to now. And I was, if you look at my little bio, I was a phys ed major in college. So I was involved in sports and I always thought I wanted to be a gym teacher. My dad was a teacher, my brother was a teacher. And, um, and I think back to my own years in physical education as I was brought up back in the 60s. And I, I'm sure that you all remember this. Remember when we were out at recess or we were in gym class and the gym teacher, whoever was on duty, chose two kids to be captains. And each one of us was responsible for picking our team. And so we went and we picked our friends and we picked the kids who were good at sports and who were popular. There was always those last kids that were left, nobody wanted them. And I, I don't know, there was something about that that really bothered me. And I was determined to, to grow up to be a gym teacher and have that never happen again. Somehow make every kid feel successful. And so, and I later learned and I was fully an adult when I learned that my younger brother, who's now a professor of dance at Rutgers University, was one of those last kids. Nobody wanted him. Not all, I mean, he grew up to be successful, and not all kids are resilient like that. And, and you think about that. That is just really a terrible thing. And... So I've really, actually, when you think about how I translated that information to my adult life, I never was a phys ed teacher. I came to Maine and I met Doug Zinchuk and I helped to work at his country store and then we bought the Chapman House in Bethel, Maine and 
we opened a bed and breakfast inn and I became involved with the chamber and that was 30 years ago and since then I had four kids and so my life got busy. But I swore that I would spend my life making sure that people felt successful. And that's just what I've done. So it doesn't matter, small business, community member, uh, people who are employed at the larger businesses in the Bethel area, um, any nonprofit who happened to ask me to join their board or be on their advisory committee, I just wanted to give, try to make things better. And that's really what I've spent my life doing. One other story um, that, I, that stands out at me is when I was asked to be on the Governor's Quality of Place Council. And prior to uh, my first meeting, Dick Barringer sent me the report that the prior Quality of Place Council members uh, did. And one of the things, one of the findings was to make sure to continue to attract uh, resources and people from a way that would be our entrepreneurs, our main entrepreneurs. And I read that before I got to the first meeting and I'm thinking to myself, there seems to be some injustice in that. That's important, but it's not the full story. How about our main kids? Why shouldn't they be those smart, successful entrepreneurs when they grow up? And so I suggested that Maybe what we need to f do is find out, are we teaching the entrepreneurial skills in schools here throughout the state of Maine, right starting from kindergarten, that will help our kids to be, if they choose, successful entrepreneurs. And let's face it, entrepreneurial skills, everybody who has entrepreneurial skills is a better team member if they're working for somebody else and they have the opportunity to be part of the future of our state's, um, uh, just our state's future. We are a small business state. We've lost a lot of big business, and what's gonna replace it is going to be lots and lots and lots of small businesses. So I say, let's help the main kids be those future business leaders. And so in closing, I would be remiss not to recognize somebody else here today, and that's my son, Brian Zinchuk. Brian, um, after he got graduated from Telstar High School, went to USM and decided that he wasn't really quite ready for college, and so he enlisted in the US Marines. Now, this was during the Iraq War, and I was not happy. I was not a happy mom, but Brian fortunately um, came back safe. He spent two um, deployments in Iraq right during the, uh, the, the throes of the war. And um, he also learned a similar lesson um, to what I did when I went to Europe and I traveled behind the Iron Curtain um, to family members who were under the communist regime at the time. And it doesn't matter where we travel in the world, whether it was to communist Czechoslovakia or Iraq during the war. People are people. People are lovely. People are good. And usually what creates um, the kind of the discourse that creates conflict is no hope for the future. And so Brian, um, uh, in a conversation I had with him when he was on his second deployment, uh, I, I asked him what he wanted for his birthday and he said, I don't, I don't want anything for my birthday, I don't need anything, but these children have nothing. And so why don't you send over a box of soccer balls and maybe some stuffed animals or, or whatnot and, and uh, I'll pass them out. And I wrote a letter, a friend of mine wrote a letter to the Sun Journal uh, talking about this young man who was in Iraq and um, wanted to 
give the children there a, a better future. And so thousands and thousands of soccer balls and stuffed animals and coloring books later, um, uh, Brian left a mark on, on the communities that he touched there in Iraq. And I'm so happy that Brian came back safe and he decided to come back to Maine. And he's one of the young entrepreneurs that that we all want to attract back to Maine and we want to keep the Maine kids here. So uh, thank you, Brian, for what you're doing and what you represent. So again, just in closing, thank you so much, Yellow, for this wonderful, wonderful honor. And uh, thank you all uh, for what you do. You're all truly an inspiration that keeps me going every day. Thanks very much.